So now I'm going to show you how to build the bell siphon and this uh, specific design is one that's worked for me and so I haven't changed the design but uh, for it you'll need a three quarter inch pipe and I've cut it down to two inch and a quarter pieces and one three and a half inch piece. You're going to need these two, it's both the male and female three and a quarter inch. This is used for electrical but it works very well, it's still PVC and it goes with all this. Um, and I'll leave the description and the links for all the material. You need one one inch coupling, a three quarter inch coupling, a right elbow, so a 90 degree elbow, a 45 degree elbow, a two inch knockout test cap. This is for the bell siphon, this is to plug the bell siphon. Most people use just the big PVC plugs, but this is 35 cents versus about a dollar fifty or two dollars. And then you're gonna need two inch PVC. This is for the actual bell siphon. Because we're not using the the big plug and we're using these, this doesn't make a air or watertight seal. So we're gonna need some uh, cement, or you can use um, Gorilla Glue. So first, to construct the standpipe, you take take the metal piece of the electrical. You put your three quarter inch PVC in there. And then you put your coupling, your three quarter coupling. But actually, <clears throat> for some reason, okay, we're gonna use these couplings right here as a reducer because I couldn't find a reducer and I can never find one. For some reason, like they won't go in. See? But I don't know why it's built like this. This side is smaller. One side is always smaller. And one side goes in easily. See? But this side just won't go in. And uh, even though it goes in pretty easy, this is more than a good enough seal so you put that in then you put that in here and bam there's your standpipe and then for the bottom we get the female end of the electrical PVC I'm gonna put in the pre-cut one and a quarter inch um, three quarter inch PVC put the right elbow in there just like that then put the three and a half inch like this and then finally 45 degree elbow and it should look like this so there's the drain, there's the siphon, there's a the standpipe and when you put it in obviously this is going to go with your grow bed the bottom of your grow bed that you cut right here and it'll go like so and there you go and it works every time. You could also get a washer. Put a washer in here. It might cost you uh, about a dollar or something, but sometimes I get one, sometimes I don't. It depends on the material or the thickness of the grow bed material. And then we're going to use this. And I'm going to cut this down. It just needs to be taller than this. Generally, I like to make this. I like to make this about five inches, five to six inches tall but I mean you could always extend this this piece you could always extend it based on your grow bed height I just always go for a six inch grow bed with see this is a four inch standpipe so I make this a six inch all right so I've measured out five and a half inches here and I'm gonna cut it out and this saw this hand saw is actually from Dollar Tree so this is only a dollar and then you just cut here and there's nothing special you just cut it out so now I've got our five and a half inch cut pipe and then obviously you want to clean this up and this is probably dangerous, but I just I just take the the saw itself and just clean it up like this. All right. So then you take your test cap and you put it on there. And like I said, it won't make a seal. So all you need to do is put some Gorilla Glue, or in this case, we're going to use some. Uh, PVC cement and just a little just a little will do you 
you just want that watertight seal. I'll leave that for a bit. All right, I forgot to mention, uh, in order to make a hole into the grow bed, I use this one inch bit and it works really well because it's the same it's the same size so just you just screw it in it's a little it's a little tight uh, which is what you want you'd rather have it you rather have it tight than loose and then you screw this in so now the final thing to do before setting it all up is you need to make some holes in the bell siphon itself and a lot of places they just they just drill holes some people say you know you should do slits um, other people do like big chunk cutouts and uh, the ones that say you just should do holes I would say don't do that don't make just uh, holes because they you want a lot of water flowing in and the holes the tiny little drill holes just don't allow that and um, the horizontal slits just take too much effort so what I like to do is I get this half inch bit and I'm going to drill down also you want to have it as low as possible with maximum water flow so I like to drill okay so I'm gonna drill four holes one two three four and I'm basically gonna make slits so I'm gonna drill the hole and then cut off the excess see just like that and then I'm gonna basically cut this little notch off and do the same thing I'm going to do that three more times. So I could just stop right here. These seem pretty big. But out of fear of restricting the water flow into the bell siphon, I'm going to uh, cut these notches off. I could, I could just make more holes. So like eight here, basically eight instead of the four. But I'd really rather just cut those notches off right there. And you can use anything like this uh, this PVC cutter. Just put it right in there. Just put it right there and cut it off. Cut the little notch off. And see, there you go. And I just do the same thing for the other three. And there you go. Your bell safe is finished. And when you're finally done with everything, you just put this on top. And that's it. Now I don't have a grow bed or any container at the moment to test this out in. But trust me, it works. Uh, this is exact same design, exact same design I've used in the other videos. And they flush with a minimum of um, yeah, 68 gallon per hour pump. That's all it takes. I recommend going with the 160. It's $5 on eBay because it's cheaper. And just it, it actually just works better. Um, and it takes away the worry of it maybe maybe working maybe not and if you guys are having trouble with your bell siphon if it's not flushing I've like I've troubleshooted a lot you can also it's a little cheat you can turn this turn it this way and if you need a little more just turn it a little more and that'll actually help it flush if it isn't flushing if it's if you're just stuck in the pre flush and it's just uh, draining turn it a little this way um, but you don't want to uh, turn it too much because then it'll flush and it'll never really stop flushing. Um, but turn it and that'll help you. But other than that, this with a 70 plus gallon per hour pump should work just fine. There you go. Alright, let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.